Well, good morning, friends. My name is Charles Anderson, one of your pastors here at Clear Lake United Methodist Church, reminding you that God is good all the time and all the time God is good. I'm glad you're here this morning. Now, today is our third Sunday in a church-wide series that we're calling The Key Event. As Christians, we believe that Jesus of Nazareth is not only the key actor in history, he's also the key event in human history. Therefore, when you and I experience and understand the four key events in Jesus' life, what you and I call Christmas, Good Friday, Easter, and Pentecost, those events actually take place once again, and the key event that is Jesus Christ becomes our personal pivot. Now, you'll remember the first Sunday we looked at Christmas, the incarnation event of God with us. Last Sunday, we looked at Good Friday, the crucifixion event of God for us. Well, this morning, we're going to celebrate Easter, the resurrection event of God ahead of us. As a reminder, our worship this Sunday is all designed and led by our traditional worship team, with the contemporary worship team designing and leading next Sunday's services. This morning is also our annual Meet the Composer weekend, and we welcome Joel Rainey and his music to worship today. So, with all that in mind, let's prepare to worship the God made known to us in Jesus Christ.
good morning. I'm delighted to be here. First of all, I'd like to say thanks to Jeff Weiss and the entire team there at Clear Lake Methodist for making this weekend happen. These are tough times for church musicians, especially church choirs. And I'm grateful to people like Jeff who work tirelessly to keep their church music programs alive and vital. It saddens me that I couldn't be there in person, but it has been a joy and a learning experience getting to know the team there of uh, technical wizards who worked very many hours to make this weekend happen. Many of my composer friends who've been there in years past have told me how much they enjoyed getting to know you folks and, and the choirs and Jeff, and um, I think I regret almost as much as anything, not being able to experience the astronaut church in person. But hopefully in the not too distant future, I'll have a chance to visit you and say hello in person. The choir took on an especially challenging project for this weekend, and that is to put together a virtual choir presentation. These aren't easy. It requires the individual members of the choir to work at home, record their own parts, and then a team of people to put it together and make it look like a, a choir that we're used to seeing. It's a big job, but they did a wonderful job. What you're about to hear is an anthem that I arranged of a wonderful song by Mary Ellen Carrick called Glory Hallelujah, and it's perfect for this Easter-themed service this morning. On that Great and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise, we'll sing glory, glory, hallelujah. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise, we'll sing glory, glory, hallelujah. We'll be changed in that moment when we meet and in the skies, we'll sing glory, glory, This is that moment in worship where I invite you to now visit clearlakemethodist.org slash here. There you'll be able to record your attendance on the Connect card. You'll be able to share your prayer requests. And you'll also be able to interact with this morning's announcements. For instance, even though we're celebrating Easter here in September, we can't deny that fall is in the air. And so we need to make some seasonal announcements 
like for instance, our pumpkin patch and our Santa's shopping mall organizers have made an early decision to forego their events in an abundance of caution for our community's health. You'll remember that we have made sure that the first priority of everything during this COVID time is the priority of safety. And we have all have a special place in our hearts for these two events. But I have to tell you, as pastor, I am proud of their wise decisions to do no harm and to promote safety. We are a church that makes the priority of taking care of the most vulnerable among us first and foremost. Uh, now, obviously this fall season is undoubtedly going to look different. And although we're still excited about the new and innovative fall programs to come, we do have some things happening this week. For instance, this week, we host our first ever drive-in worship experience in our church parking lot on Wednesday at seven o'clock. All of you will need to participate with an FM radio in your vehicle. When you arrive here on campus, we'll direct you to a parking space and we'll instruct you how to tune in to our broadcasting station. We simply ask that you stay in your cars for the duration of the event. The parking spaces will fill on a first come, first serve basis and we'll need to be spaced to allow safe distance for you to roll down your windows if you choose to. Now this new event of Drive in Church is a part of our phased transition plan back to campus. This past week, for instance, our staff initiated Transition One and the staff began returning on site to begin facilitating more and more on-site events, on-campus events such as drive-in worship. These are the first tangible steps where we can bring you back face-to-face, relationship-to-relationship, heart-to-heart, joy-to-joy. These are the first steps, and those first steps need to be matched by your faithful financial gifts this morning, which are vital to our congregation and our community life moving forward into this new phase. You'll be able to make a gift or, or schedule a recurring donation when you choose the online giving button at clearlakemethodist.org slash here.
Good morning, my name is Sophia Millett. Our Bible passage for the Easter event comes from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 through 5 and 12 through 26. Hear now the word of the Lord. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misinterpreting God because we testify of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to the God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must regain until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. May God bless this, the reading and hearing of God's Easter good news. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Let all that is within me bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And remember God's great mercy. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Let earth and sky and heaven bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And sing God's praise strength when hope is gone. Bless the Lord whose unbounding love can take an empty heart and fill it with a song. Oh
Good morning, I'm Pastor Preston and I want you to know that I'm glad you're worshiping alongside us today. Today we continue our key event worship series where we look at some of the most important key events, not only in Jesus's life, but in the history of humanity. These pivotal moments are more than stories we, we retell year after year. They are events that redefine history and all of creation. We've talked about Christmas and we've talked about Good Friday, and as you can see by the flowers and the white drapery on the cross, as you can see by the picture behind me and the white stole, and as you can see by all of worship that we've had so far this morning, today we're talking about Easter. Before we continue, let's pray. Holy God, we give you thanks that you are a God of resurrection and new life. We give you thanks that even in September, we can talk about the Easter story and remember that we are Easter people. Lord God, prepare our hearts, prepare our minds. Lord, may we hear what you have to speak to us outside an empty tomb today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I went to get a flu shot in one of those grocery store pharmacies a few years back. Uh, I get my flu shot every year and I want to remind you to grab a flu shot this year as well. Um, but that year ahead of me at the counter was a mother and her probably elementary school age son and they were also there to get their flu shots. And this little guy was absolutely terrified of getting his shot. He, he was dreading it. He was worried. He was, he was asking and pleading with his mom, please don't don't make me have to do this um, and and she was being absolutely encouraging and helpful she was being affirming and as many parents probably would she she even said after we get a shot we'll go get some some coffee or, or something and uh, sweeten sweeten the day and and she said to her son she said okay I tell you what I'll go first and so she sat down in the chair next to the pharmacist and the pharmacist asked if she was ready and, and just as the needle was approaching her skin, she, she looked at her son and she said, yes, ma'am, uh, to the pharmacist, I'm ready. And she said, see, honey, it doesn't hurt that, ow, oh. And, and I, I tell you what, bless that little boy's heart. I watched his face go from kind of excitement and wonder into just fear, and he came unglued. There are so many moments in life when seeing someone go ahead of you is helpful, and this wasn't one of them, but you get my drift. When have you seen someone go first or go ahead of you in a way that brought you comfort? Seeing our childhood heroes tackle their obstacles sets us up for a life of perseverance. Seeing the person who cared for us growing up show respect and model healthy behaviors sets us up to treat others and ourselves in healthy ways. When younger students see older students head off to mission trips and head to church camp, uh, when we see our professional mentors blaze new trails or, or take risks with wisdom and finesse, when, when we see someone step out and take a stand against oppression and racism in the world or workplace or dinner table around us, when, if you're a parent, when you're watching other parents model behavior processing with their children, when we see our peers and friends turn their eyes to the horizon of retirement and begin that complicated and emotional journey, and when, as all humans do, we arrive, some more eventually than others, at a place of watching our loved ones make their final transition from life on this side of heaven to the next, when, when we enter these moments, seeing someone go ahead of us isn't just informative, it's hope-giving, it allays fears. Like droplets of water that follow the same path down a window, it blazes a trail for us to follow. This is the story of Good Friday. 
Throughout Jesus' life and ministry, he kept calling to the people around him with the words, follow me. And many did. They followed him throughout the region of Galilee and down to Jerusalem. They followed him from the private room and the table of the Last Supper to the Garden of Gethsemane for a night of prayer. They followed him at a distance when he was arrested and put on trial. And they followed him and Simon of Cyrene as they carried that cross to Golgotha and through the, an anguishing Good Friday story until his death. And then they followed his limp body with Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus to bury Jesus in Joseph's tomb. Last week, we talked about how this world, particularly in the worst of times, fills us with questions. Questions like, what's coming next? Where do we go from here? I'm afraid of what tomorrow or next week or next month may hold. When will things be back to normal again? Or more realistically, what will our new normal be? These were surely the questions overwhelming Jesus' followers in that moment as they face not only their own mortality, but face on that cross the death of their expectations and hopes for the world. And this is the story of Easter. Three days later, when the followers of Jesus arrived at the tomb to continue to mourn and wrestle with their devastating loss, a heavenly messenger answers those earlier questions with, do not be afraid. And they learn that Jesus is no longer dead. He is risen. Just as sin entered the world through man, through Adam and Eve, so did God bring about salvation and the resurrection through the man of Jesus Christ. Our scripture today tells us, For as in Adam all die, so as in Christ all will be made alive. And Jesus doesn't stop inviting us with that world-changing, trailblazing, life and hope-giving invitation of follow me. Christ goes ahead of us, not only into death, but beyond death, into resurrection and new life as well. Our scripture, to take it a little further, says, For as in Adam all die, so as in Christ all will be made alive, but each in turn. Christ, the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. In those days, the discipline of offering first fruits of the harvest was a sign, a promise of hope. It was an act of faith to take the very first yield of your crop or your herd or whatever form your livelihood took and to offer it as a sacrificial gift to God. It was faithfully saying, I know there's more to come, but the best and the first belong to God as God will see me through. And in the Easter story, we see not only that Christ is the first fruits of God's promise of resurrection. After all, Jesus is the sacrifice and Jesus is the first and the best among us. But we also see that Jesus brings the assurance that there's more resurrection to come and that God will see us through the end of our lives and beyond. The great Easter hymn echoes our scripture, Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Earth and heaven in chorus say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high, Alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth reply, say it with me, Alleluia. Easter morning changes history and humanity because we no longer need to fear death. Christ has gone before us into death and comes out the other side. Lives again our glorious King, Alleluia. Where, O oh death, is now thy sting? Alleluia. Once he died our souls to save. Alleluia. Where's thy victory, boasting grave? Alleluia. And Christ never stops inviting us with his call of follow me. We follow Christ into ministry. We follow Christ to live and serve amongst our human brothers, sisters, and siblings who hold the least among us. We follow Christ to tell of God's glory in the best of times and the worst of times. We follow Christ to heal the brokenness of the world and to see the kingdom of heaven as a present and future reality. This is what it means to be Easter people. If death can't hold us down, then what is holding us back? Easter lets us follow Christ eternally. Soar we now where Christ has led. 
Alleluia, following our exalted head, Alleluia, made like him, like him we rise, Alleluia, ours the cross, the grave, the skies, Alleluia. Jesus still calls us to follow him. Who are you following? Where are you going? How will you be Easter people this week? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for gathering us around an empty grave, for telling us to do not be afraid. We give you thanks for giving us the words of Alleluia. We give you thanks for designing us and this world so that the kingdom of heaven can be experienced here and now and that we do not need to fear death. We give you thanks for being a God who continues to bring us closer, draw us in, and to make us a part of your redemptive story. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning we've been celebrating the Easter event of resurrection, God ahead of us. And it's precisely because Jesus goes ahead of us in life and in death and life beyond death that we know our prayers do have a resurrection power, an Easter depth to them. We already know now what we will one day know then, and we will know then as we know now, our prayers are heard. Our prayers make a difference. Therefore, in that Easter hope, let's pray. Lord God of life and of death and of life beyond death, you were at the beginning when we were created 
and you are, will be at the end when we are recreated anew in the heavenly kingdom that is called by your name. We know today, Lord God, that every moment in our lives and then every moment beyond our lives are defined and destined by your grace, by your intention, by your sovereignty over us and your unconditional love on our behalf. Such an event, Lord God, as Easter is still too amazing for us. If we really, really understood, not only would our prayers be greater, our prayers might well be speechless because this is truly beyond anything we could ever imagine or accomplish on our own. So Lord Jesus, with that type of amazement in our hearts and that much confidence in what you've done for us, we bring you everything that we have. We bring you everything that we are. We bring you everyone that we love, everything that we fear, everything that we hope for, and we place them in your care. Bless those, Lord God, who need Easter here and now in their hearts. May they know Easter forgiveness for their regrets. May they know Easter hope for their fears and grief. May they know Easter life and the death that they die are the death of the loved, their loved ones who are dying. And may, know, may they know the Easter Jesus face to face, heart to heart, hope to hope. For it is the name of our resurrected Lord and Savior that we pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.